on the opening of the fourth lunar month through the power of Sultan al Awliya and the reality of the nine, that that nine and the fourth month opens the secret of 36. 36 being the heart of Holy Qur'an, Surah Al Yaseen. And a reminder for myself tonight, Subhanalladhi bi yadihi malakut kulli shay ilayhi turja'oon. That glory be to him in whose hands is the entire dominion of all things, kulli shay. And to him you'll be brought back. The hymn has a tafsir because we don't know where we came and we don't know where we're going. You're definitely not a partner with Allah so you're not going back to Allah La sharik, la mathli that you're nothing like unto Allah That this is the ocean of creation and we go and manifest in this world and return back to where Allah originated our creation. But when Allah inspiring within the heart of Prophet Prophet inspiring within the heart of Ahbab and the lovers that the malakut, the world of light, Allah giving His glory. Glory be to those hands and the hand that has from the malakut that from the world of light their hand because their hand has dominion over everything. Allah gave as a gift to Prophet Allah has no hands. Hands are in reference to Allah's might and majesty but who does have hands is creation. So bi yadihi Allah is giving us and tabarak bi yadihi and subhan unto his yad means that blessing be upon their hands, my glory be upon their hands that they have a dominion from malakut, they have an authority from the world of light. And so then they come into our lives to teach us. Don't think your mulk and that your physical body can have any effect on your light. Because you don't fix outside in. That would be retarded to think that way. There's no way your physicality can affect the reality of light. But awliya come and teach us because 99% think that their physical characteristics and attributes and actions will change the light of their reality inside. It's impossible. It's impossible. But what Allah wants is to teach, your inside will change your outside. So who controls the in has an effect on the outside. Who controls and operates from within controls and affects the outside. Not somebody outside trying to break in. Means that if that was the case then your prayers would have changed you. You would have prayed a few times and been flying. That your zakah would have completely cleansed you. Means all those usul that you do, you're doing what God has asked of you as an act of love and muhabbat. But Prophet comes to remind us always, don't think that those actions will actually change anything inside. Everything is a ni'mat from Allah Allah says, there's no guidance but the one whom I guide. You can pray all you want, if Allah is not guiding to that reality, it's not your actions that will open it, not your prayer that will open it, not your zakah that will open it, not going back and forth to hajj 20 times will open it. It has to be a ni'mat and a grant from Allah He has to grant a gift and the gift is the gift of light, that light is iman and faith. God has to give a grant of light into the soul. God has to give a grant of light and power into the soul. The soul once activated the light that deposited within the heart can make an effect and a change on everything. But all the actions in the world can't change anything unless God is guiding and God is granting. 
And that's why we live in a world now where we see people with so many crazy actions on their physicality. You say, man, these guys, they recite a lot. They pray a lot. They're, they, they look like they're excessive in their worshipness. Their pants are even short, very short, a lot. Why is not changing them? Because they come to remind, it's not that that grants a light into the heart. Those actions were supposed to be for muhabbat and love. That, Ya Rabbi, I'm doing what you asked of me. I tried to be a good person because you asked of me and I want to do good. When you have good character and sincerity in your goodness that you strive to do good, knowing that you can never achieve it, Allah's what we call rida and satisfaction, Allah's God Almighty's happiness has to dress the servant. When he's happy with the servant, every light and every emanation can begin to dress upon the soul. Means then when we understood that at the door of the turuqs, so their doors are different. The door of other associations, they come and say, oh do like this amal, do this amal, do this amal, do this amal, hoping that these actions will raise. A majority of them because the rule and not the exception, Allah can open whatever He wants for any of His creation. But the rule is 99% of the room isn't changing in those jamas. Because if you think your prayer is going to change you, you went for jummah is going to change you, you gave some zakat and your hand was shaking when you gave it and you think it's going to change you, no. That's a different belief. And there's so many hadiths and so many teachings for that. That Allah comes to their action and He throws it. Allah comes to their prayers and said, you prayed like that to be seen by people and you got your reward from the people but I'm not giving you the reward. You gave to be known by people, you got your recognition and your plaques all over the walls, your name on buildings but I'm not giving you a reward. So it means there's so many teachings when the exterior is focused, God Almighty only knows what the reward will be. But then when he inspires, no, no, go sit with the people of light because they have an authority from the world of light. Their associations are not like other associations. People wondering who come new and say, what are these guys reciting about? They have a system in which they have to activate their light. As soon as they start the association, the room is filled in the world of light with all those immense souls that are being mentioned in their madad, their association is taking place like a universe above us. From that association and that light is the dominion and power over everything. When that light comes and the shaykhs connect with that reality, when they're authorized to connect with that reality, then Allah describing that ayatul kareem, there that malakut kulli shay. The one who's the head of all of them, any du'a that one makes of Prophet makes, it's final, it's already been given by Allah So what's happening in these associations is you merely attend via your physicality or your internet, just bring your heart to the association, that's all they need. As soon as the association begins like a rocket, the souls are in their presence. In their presence, receiving their zikrs, their lights and their gifts from that association. Which one of these souls wants to bestow, whether it's Prophet directly bestowing, the awliya bestowing. Just imagine all of these personalities that are above us in these associations. Each one has, has a reality and attachment to certain people who are here tonight. They inspired them go into that association because those associations are real from Malakut. These are not the people of mulk. They're not sitting here hoping we're going to tap into something. We could sit a thousand years and you won't tap into anything. But these people of Malakut means they entered into that realm, Allah sent them back into the dunya and now go and guide people. And anywhere you sit is an association of the world of light. As soon as you sit with them, you're in their presence. Their souls are bestowing upon your heart and your reality all the lights that Prophet wants to bestow. You live a thousand lives and you can't achieve that reality. We gave the numbers before. When Allah just give a hint to insan 
that Surat Al-Qadr and why everyone's waiting in Ramadan for Laylatul Qadr. That one Laylatul Qadr, if you should achieve this ocean of power from Allah it's as if a thousand months. So it means that that servant who achieved Laylatul Qadr, Allah will make every fajr a Laylatul Qadr for that servant. What Allah gives, He never takes away. If anyone lies to you and says something was taken away that Allah has granted, it's a lie. It's never taken. Allah doesn't make a mistake. Allah deals with His servants how He wants to deal with His servant. But what Allah gives is never taken away. It's not like us. We're cheap, we're angry with people, we don't like somebody, so I'm not giving it to you tomorrow. Or their du'as, Ya Rabbi, that whatever you gave, increase me. Hilmal mazi, grant me more and more of what you have granted. Their Laylatul Qadr, every fajr is a Laylatul Qadr. That every amal they do is multiplied by 30,000. Thousand months is what in one day? Salamun hiya hatta mitla al fajr. That on that fajr time, Allah will grant them the amal of 1,000 months coming on that fajr time. 1,000 months is 30,000 as a multiplier, because 1,000 months, 30 days. So their multiplier, it's 30,000. They pray two rakahs, it's as if 30,000 rakahs you have to pray. They give one dollar as if you have to give 30,000. So it means the multiplier of what Allah grants from these Qadri people whom Allah granted, whom Allah wants to grant, He grants. And nobody can say, no, Allah doesn't grant it. Allah grants whatever He wants to grant. Their multiplier, 30,000. Then Prophet ﷺ comes and sweetens the deal and says, no, there are people of tafakkur that one hour of their tafakkur is 70 years of your worshipness. One hour of tafakkur from them, these ahbab, these people of light is as if 70 years of your worshipness. If somebody is teaching tafakkur, his whole life is tafakkur. He's in 24 hours times 70 years. What's that? 1400 years is one day of them. It's from hadith of Prophet There are people of tafakkur, they're one hour, 70 years. Imagine that 24 hours a day, their reality is live. It's not like internet dial-up anymore. They have a live connection, live streaming, live information, live realities and, and lights coming to them. Then that multiplier 70 years is in one day is 1400 years. One day with them is the equivalent of 1400 years you'd have to live on this earth. For one day with them. The people, they read the same hadith, they just don't put the beads together. So it means these Qadri people whom Allah dressed, all their amal is multiplied. These people of Ahlul Tafakkur, especially the ones teaching Tafakkur, every day you sit with them is 1400 years of worship. Can you get that in life? No. That's why we say it's a grant and a gift from Allah Whom Allah guides is truly guided. Whom Allah does not guide is not guided. And waliul murshidun that not only is a wali that reached that reality of light but has also been granted guidance that he's rashideen, he's mahdeen and he's moving through the oceans of kamileen. Means as soon as you sit in their associations their lights are pulling the souls. The souls enter into that association of light and they be dressed and they be blessed. Lights that have been given to the soul and to the heart that we can never achieve with our physicality. So then the greatest sin is to deny yourself access to that. We say, I'm not gonna go, it's a bit too far for me, I'm a bit tired. You don't know what lights Allah wants to deposit upon your soul, what gift that Prophet wants to give onto the soul, what only Allah wants to bestow, but Allah wants what? Take one step. It's not like you're Hazrat Maryam and it's going to come into your bedroom. 
It says, be humble, make a step towards that, fight all the devils that tell you, I'm not going tonight. Even they live across the block. Forget about those who are coming 3,000 miles to, to spend their own money and their time to deliver this ni'mat. But even they live one block away, I'm tired tonight. Oh, your shaitan is so heavy on you that he don't even let you to go get this ni'mat and this blessing. This is not rijal. Rijal, they fight all their devils and they move thousands of miles to have a tremendous himma. Nothing stops them from reaching that reality. Nothing stops them from reaching what Allah want them to achieve. Because they know that in that association is going to be a holy association. They know in that association these praisings we talked about in, in Vancouver is when you love someone you serenade them. You sing all sorts of songs. Who's the greatest lover of that reality? Allah Allah's immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad All these ahbab and lovers they've been inspired by Allah that come and recite, praise me and praise upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad As soon as the praising begins, it's immediately brought into that Divinely Presence, that Divinely Light of Prophet and they begin to serenade with all their ishq on Sayyidina Muhammad Because Allah's gift, He says, I love this reality so much, I want to show how much I love you by inspiring this creation to love you like I love you. And they're all, all these ahbab, they're lines of them. As soon as the associations start, they line up and they begin to praise upon Prophet and they're given a time of an audience, then they move and the next group comes. What gifts then are going to be given? What realities are going to be given? These are not something that can be achieved by a thousand years of praying. We pray, we fast, we do all these actions because God asked us to. And we do it to show that I'm not, a, I'm not a, a servant to this body, but I'm going to show my dominion over the body and I'm going to make it to bow down. You're not praying because you give anything to God Almighty. But when you can't take the donkey, because the body's a donkey, and you can't force the head of the donkey onto the ground, there's something wrong with you. Because your donkey's too strong, so I'm not putting my head, you put your head. And that's the only reason you're praying. Allah doesn't need anything from your praying. But Allah says that if you want these lights, you want these realities, you want to see these horizons within your heart, you don't have to drink, you don't have to smoke, you don't have to kill yourself to see something beautiful. Put your donkey onto the ground. Sit with these people from the world of light and they push such an immense light into your heart, into your soul. And they begin to teach, just make your donkey to be under your discipline. Put his head to the ground, wash him, keep him to be clean. Do all these actions because God Almighty has asked you to do it. But sit with them saying that, Ya Rabbi ana abdukul ajis or da'if or miskeen or zalim. For verily I am a zalim to myself. We said that if you don't accept, La ilaha anta subhanika ini kuntum mina zalimin fastajabna najayna min al qa'am wa dhalika nujna al mu'mineen. That there's nothing but the glory of God Almighty and I am verily an oppressor to myself. If I don't believe that, this whole door of reality is never opened. As soon as I believe that, I say, of course none of those actions are going to count. But I want to sit with those lovers of that reality. I want to be like a faqir, I want to be poor in the sense no matter what Allah has given to me, I have nothing in comparison to God Almighty's kingdom. Then my wealth doesn't make me to feel arrogant, my status and my license doesn't make me to feel arrogant. I'm absolutely nothing for God can take it all away tomorrow. You can wake up in the morning and the du'a of the shaykh can wake you up in the morning. By morning time you won't know even what your name is. Just to show you, you, th you think that you're powerful. There was a sto story of a wali and the king. I hope nobody gets offended by the story. The king was bothering the wali. He says, do you know who I am? What kind of mulk I have? You know what kind of authority I have? It's fighting with him every day, fighting with him every day. And he said that, you know, show your power, just do things for me, do like this. No, he said, no. And then he came and got fed up with the arrogance of the king. He came to him, he said, oh my lord, 
let this guy never go to the bathroom again. And then made his dua and walked out. The king said, what a funny, weird dua this, <laughs> this pious man made. I thought he's going to do this and there's a magic. And said, no, life's simplest problem is now going to about to devastate you. One day, two day, three day, he's in immense pain. He brings all the physicians of his kingdom and I can't, I can't function, I can't do nothing. Fourth day, by fifth to sixth day he's on the verge of death. He's now filled with his own garbage, nothing coming out. Just the simple function of the body, if Allah closes it, all the wealth and status of your life means absolutely nothing until he begged for forgiveness for that pious person say come back come back please apologize apologize whatever i did wrong just reverse that dua so imagine then his dua is make this king <laughs> got his functions back so the <laughs> the moral of the story is that we are a weak creation and we rely on everything from allah azawajal the slightest difficulty in our physicality and everything is often functioning so with that understanding, we made ourselves to be nothing, nothing, nothing. And the Ya Rabbi inspire us to the associations of light and that they fill us with light and, and take away difficulties and sadness. And any time our light is running low, if we, if we truly understood the inside controls the outside, then your whole life is to recharge the inside. Why are people depressed? Why are people anxious? Why are people having all these difficulties? Because the inside is not being charged. If you think you're just going to charge the physicality and you start to run on a low battery, everything makes no sense, everything falls apart. So then they're always inspiring, keep yourself connected, keep yourself attached to the world of light either in physicality or through internet, that when you're listening and, and asking yourself that I want to be in their association, that I see myself there, I'm doing the zikr, I'm doing the chanting, Ya awliyaullah, Ya rijalullah, that fill my heart and fill my soul with your light and with your energies, this gift that Allah has given to you, then you find your inner power strengthened and then making every difficulty from the outer reality to be clean and to be purified. We pray that Allah inspire us to more and more understanding of the reality and the power of inside controlling the outside. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.